the Jeevo, truly the workhorse of this modern railroad age. Canadian Pacific, like all other major North American roads, has a number of ES44 AC Jeevos on their roster, with 290 total. Number 8781 is the newest commemorative unit on CP, having recently received a special repaint. The locomotive is made to acknowledge Canadian Pacific's partnership with Hapag Lloyd, celebrating the renewal of a long-term rail service agreement between the railway and the world-class shipping giant. In addition, 8781 also promotes CP's newest shipping connection, the Port of St. John. The railway regained access to this deep water Atlantic port with the acquisition of the Central Maine and Quebec Railway in June of 2020. As a token of appreciation to those involved in the 8781 project, a number of HO scale models were commissioned by Canadian Pacific and gifted to those responsible, including one being presented to Hapag Lloyd. The man commissioned to paint these models was Rob Gale Sr., who has a history with limited run model train paint projects. Rob was responsible for painting many prototypes of Canadian paint schemes for HO scale model train manufacturers over the years. These included companies such as Trains Canada, MDC Roundhouse, Old Era Athern and Proto. Models such as the Proto 2000 FA and FB 2s, GP 9s and RDCs, as well as the old H and D's own Roundhouse CP Overton passenger cars and the Trains Canada boxcars are a few examples of the many prototypes Rob has painted over the years. The HO scale 8781s for CP were all Athern Genesis non-powered locomotives. However, there was an additional HO Jeevo produced with permission from Canadian Pacific. This model was a one-of-one -one powered Athern Genesis Jeevo commissioned by Ghost Pine Film Productions exclusively to show the painting process of the CP display models. All of the Athern models were factory painted in the Canadian Pacific Modern Block Scheme and numbered in the 8700 series. The early era ES44 AC was chosen because it was close in design to the prototype 8781, though one or two modifications were made to increase accuracy. The first step for any paint project is disassembling the model for ease of handling. Most of the fine details such as grab irons and handrails, as well as the windows were removed. For the powered unit, the lights also had to be disconnected. After disassembly came the removal of the lettering. This was done using 99% isopropyl alcohol on a Q-tip. The alcohol takes off the lettering before it disturbs the paint. This is done so the old lettering and numbers won't show under the new paint. The more conventional way of preparing a model for a repaint is to completely strip the old paint off. However, due to time constraints, it was more efficient to remove only the lettering. It is important to note that these locomotives are display trophies, so the process of repainting them was potentially different than what most model railroaders may do. That being said, it's good to keep in mind that there are many different methods for achieving the same goal in model building. These methods were selected so the locomotives for CP could be done fast. Rob finished all of them in a week. The alcohol sometimes causes a shiny silhouette of what was just removed. 
While this looks like the letter is not fully gone, this silhouette will be completely invisible once the new paint is on. It's good to double check by running your finger over what was just removed. Keep going until the area is smooth and you can no longer feel the lettering. As instructed by CP, not many modifications were made to the engines. The conductor side grab iron ladder was removed though, as this is a very noticeable detail that the real 8781 does not have, being a second delivery Jeevo. A dull number 11 hobby knife blade helps remove the grab irons without scratching the shell too badly. Since these won't be returned to the model, not as much care is required during their removal. The dull blade is then changed out for a new sharp one, so the grab iron mounts can effortlessly be cut off. Working slowly and carefully here helps to ensure that only these grab iron mounts are sliced away, and door hinges and other molded on details are not accidentally removed. The grab iron holes were filled from the back using speed glue, which is a siren acrylite with a filling agent so it can be sanded. The reason for filling them from the back was so an easier to sand filler could be used from the front, basically so the holes didn't require a lot of sanding for a smooth finish. Before any painting was done, the shell and cab were cleaned using warm, mildly soapy water on a wet paper towel. This is to get rid of any potential alcohol residue or fingerprints made during the disassembly. The factory Athern white frame stripe was masked off, so it didn't need to be reapplied. While the sill of the real 8781 is slightly different than a standard CP Jeevo, the white safety stripe and black painted frame under it are nearly identical. Floquel Reefer White was used as a primer base color. A white base will ensure the final Hapagloid Orange will be vibrant and accurate to the mixed color. A grey or black primer would have toned down the orange and flattened the look of the paint. The handrails and ditch lights were also primed white. After allowing the white to dry for a few hours, it was time to spray the orange. These trophies were being painted at the same time as the real 8781, so there were no prototype photos to work from yet. Instead, CP supplied mock-up diagram drawings which helped immensely. Small changes that were made to the scheme on the real unit were noted and applied to the models. The real locomotive was to be painted in Hapagloid Orange. To make sure the color of the models were as close to accurate as possible, paint codes were supplied by CP. The orange was made using a mix of the Floquel colors, Scarlet, Reefer Yellow, SP Daylight Orange, BNSF Heritage Orange, and Reefer White, using an old empty Floquel bottle labeled accordingly to store the new color. A paint sample was sent to CP and approved before any of the six models were painted. All six models were painted entirely using Floquel paint. Floquel is fast drying and sprays really well through an airbrush. Many modelers agreed it was the perfect paint, which made it all the more disappointing when testers chose to discontinue the line in 2013. Much like painting a car, thin, even passes were used to slowly build up the coat. 
After each layer, the pass patterns alternate between horizontal and vertical to ensure even coverage. For those curious, yes, the St. John Express 8781 is the same color orange as CP8757, the Every Child Matters locomotive. The models were then left to dry overnight, so the orange wouldn't be disturbed in later steps. The next paint step was the black parts of the locomotive. Here is where 8781's sill differs from a standard CP Jeevo. The black frame color extends above the white stripe. On a regular CP Jeevo, above that sill stripe is red. From the white safety stripe down was masked off on all the models so all the red areas could be repainted black. The color used here was Flocal Engine Black and an original Old Formula Square bottle of it from the 1960s. The walkways behind the cab and nose anti-glare panel were also masked and painted using the same color. The GPS dome and live tracker were masked and repainted white. The reason they weren't masked off before the orange is because they're not flat or even surfaces, so it is actually easier to mask around and repaint them instead of fighting to save their original color. The many details on the models were painted by hand using a fine paintbrush. Many details were painted using flocal bright silver. Reefer white was used on the PTC antennas atop the cab. The number boards were painted black to make deckling easier. Athern has designed the number boards on these locomotives, so if you wanted to, it's very easy to add lights to them. The nose door window was also painted black. Keep in mind, while this isn't the approach that most modelers would choose for the nose details, these are display pieces, meant to look good on a shelf. The grab irons that weren't removed during disassembly had their centers painted black or white, as per prototype reference of other CPES-44s. Using Flocal Crystal Coat, the paint was sealed in preparation for decaling. Crystal Coat is Flocal's gloss coat and was available in almost all of their paint lines. Following the same application process as the orange, made sure the clear coat had a nice even finish. Crystal Coat, like most Flocal paint, dries very fast, as only an hour passed by before decals were applied. The decals were a custom limited run supplied by Canadian Pacific, especially for this project. They are the usual water slide transfers and were applied in the appropriate places based on the drawings. A scale rule was used to make sure that the decals were in the same spot relative to the scale measurements on the drawings. The first aid cross and red and white safety stripe on the nose door, as well as the fire extinguisher logos all needed to be added, but were not part of the decal sheet supplied by CP. 
The safety decals were taken from various other microscale decal sheets. The nose door decals were multiple stripes that had to be carefully layered on one another. The little safety placards along the hood doors were not mandatory on the trophies, but the ones on the radiator section were added anyway to break up the monotony of the constant orange along the roof. All of the decals were sealed using Walther's Solvacet. This thins out the decal so it settles into any panel lines on the model. It also helps get rid of any decal film lines. For very small decals, simply touching the edge of them with the in-cap brush will be enough for the Solvacet to work its magic. That way you won't accidentally move the decal with the bristles. It is very important not to touch or try to adjust the decal once the Solvacet has been applied. The chemical compounds turn the decal almost into paint, and trying to fiddle with it will smear or distort the decal. If that happens, you'll need to completely remove the decal and start again with a new one. Patience is key here. The custom decals from CP were thicker than most, so multiple coats of Solvacet were required to make them sit properly. The cab and shell were temporarily assembled for the final clear coat. This coat was a high semi-gloss made to represent that out-of-the-shop's glossy sheen the real loco would have when unveiled on November 4th. This was made by mixing Flocal Crystal Coat with Flocal Reflectance Reducer. Reflectance Reducer was Flocal's flat finish in their Marine Colors line. This clear coat layer further helps seal the decals so they won't wear off when touched. It also gives them a nice uniform finish with the rest of the model. This final clear coat was left to dry overnight, so no fingerprints would ruin the nice finish during further handling. The final step was assembly, starting with the cab interior and weights, so the cab could be fitted on the shell for the last time. All the details were returned to the model. Grab irons were painted with orange ends and a black or white center based on prototype reference. These added colors are for safety to make the grab irons easier to see for crews. The one powered model had its wires hooked back up before the frame and shell were reassembled. It helps to take a photo of how the board is wired before you take everything apart. That way everything can be put back correctly. With a little patience and delicate handling, the Athern Genesis Jeevos fit back together fairly well. The very last step was reinstalling and painting the handrails. The handrails on Canadian Pacific Jeevos have a black railing with body color stanchions and white ends for safety. The black and white were painted by hand once the railings were back on the model. The white end railings by the steps are to make them more visible for crews working in the dark. After all, safety is the number one priority for the railroad.
one week, Rob managed to finish all of the half pack Lloyd Celebration Jeevo trophies for Canadian Pacific, and an additional powered version for Ghost Pine Film Productions. Taking a locomotive from factory to a new custom scheme is a lot of work, but the efforts are worth it. In appreciation of two of the finest corporations in the world, our 8781 model will remain proudly displayed on the GPFP desk for us to see and enjoy, remembering the business partnership of Canadian Pacific and Hapag Lloyd, and all the history the locomotive shares. If there is anything you may want to see us build or model someday, write it in the comment section down below. This is the first of hopefully many model building videos we plan to post here on this channel in the future. Thanks for watching. If you are new here, be sure to check out our other Canadian train related documentaries here on the channel.